Is this the end? And welcome back to Cliffy Land. This is Week in Country 193 on our second attempt of cooking the food of every single country in the world. And tonight we're up to the very last United Nations member state in our grand list of countries, and that is Zimbabwe. Yes, we are at the end of the line. And Zimbabwe is a beautiful country located in Southern Africa, is surrounded by the nations of Zambia, Botswana, South Africa, Mozambique, and it is just like that much away from the little nippy part of Namibia, depending on how you want to discuss a bridge across water. Zimbabwe is a beautiful nation uh, known for its wildlife, its beautiful vistas, and of course the stunning Victoria Falls, which can be seen from Zimbabwe or last times nation Zambia. It is a wonderful country with a fascinating history, centuries of empire leading to eventual European colonization. First, some contact with the Portuguese and then the British taking over and running it for decades until there was independence and then apartheid and then actual independence and then uh, decades and decades of dictatorship and now I don't know what but then there's the cuisine and the cuisine is delicious it is a rustic cuisine primarily it is characterized by uh, cornmeal mealy meal which would be made into sadza well I hope I got the pronunciation right which is the center of a lot of meals and that is a lot like a lot of the dishes throughout all of Sub-Saharan Africa. More on that in a moment. Now you'll also find dishes involving beans and rice and potatoes and meats would be generally goat or beef or chicken when it can be found and lots of dishes involving peanut butter and other assorted pulses. Now this is where things get complicated for me. You see, I've cooked the food of every other African country, all 53 other ones already, and when I got up to Zimbabwe, not only was it the last nation in our list of United Nations member states, it also has a cuisine that's very similar to its neighbors, as you know, everyone else's is as well. But the dishes I found for Zimbabwe were very similar to those that we'd done last time for Zambia. And well, let's talk about how things went when we did this all last time around. Well, five years ago on the Global Cooking Challenge, I wanted to give myself something a little bit different. And that meant consciously choosing not to do the mealy meal and the peanut butter and the greens because I've done certain forms of that for so many other countries and I wanted to end this on a bang. So for that reason, I wound up looking into some dishes that unfortunately involved a certain amount of colonial influence. The British did kind of run the joint for a while and they left their tradition, shall we say, behind which are still practiced by some. You can still find, you know, high tea and such. Now, one of the dishes I found was actually from South Africa, but there was a version of it for Zimbabwe with some slight differences. And that's what we did, and that's what we're doing tonight, which is sosotis, which is a grilled marinated meat, usually lamb and pork, served with apricots. And that was really, really good, and it involved the grill, which we don't actually have here. More on that in a moment. And I'm serving that with a rice salad, which sounded really good, and it really was and it's gonna be even better this time. So before we get into all the details, we need to see what go into tonight's two dishes. First, for our grilled marinated meat with apricots, we'll need two pounds of lamb cut into one inch pieces, one pound of pork cut into half inch cubes, one garlic clove peeled, salt, pepper, four tablespoons of oil, one cup of onions chopped, one tablespoon of curry powder, one clove of garlic minced, two tablespoons of sugar, one tablespoon of tamarind paste, two cups of white vinegar, two tablespoons of apricot jam, two tablespoons of cornstarch, which will be dissolved in, two tablespoons of red wine, half a pound of dried apricots, and half a cup of dry sherry. And then for our rice salad, we'll need three cups of brown rice, a quarter cup of whole lentils, half a teaspoon of salt, eight cups of water, six tablespoons of white vinegar, two teaspoons of curry powder, six tablespoons of brown sugar, half a teaspoon of turmeric, two tablespoons of soy sauce, half a cup of oil, one teaspoon of salt, half a red pepper diced, one half green pepper diced, and one large red onion diced. 
Well, that's gonna be really good. Word to the wise, though. I gave myself extra work for this one because I want it to be really good. That means that you're gonna have to start your prep and cooking three nights before you actually plan on eating. So get ready for that one. But it'll be worth it in the end. You'll also have to do some work the night before cooking as well. Sorry about that, folks, but it's gonna be worth it. So now we need to get cooking. Two to three days before cooking, do the following. Rub the garlic clove along the inside of a large bowl. Then into the bowl, place the lamb and pork pieces. Season with salt and pepper and toss. In a saucepan, heat the oil, add the onions and saute for five to six minutes. Then add the curry powder and garlic and saute for another minute. Add the sugar, tamarind paste, vinegar, and jam, and stir well. Stir the cornstarch mixture and add it to the onions. And cook, stirring constantly until it thickens. This should take about three minutes. Cool, then add the meat and toss well. And marinate for two to three days. Then one day before preparing the sosatis, combine the dried apricots and sherry in a small bowl. Cover and let sit overnight in the refrigerator. Drain the meat from the sauce and reserve. Then onto skewers, thread the lamb, pork, and apricots. Grill over charcoal, if you have charcoal grill, until browned on all sides, and serve with the heated reserved sauce. Rinse the rice and lentils with the water and place it in a large pot. Cover with water and bring to a boil. Gently boil for approximately 30 minutes until the rice is cooked. It should look split and curly. Drain the rice and lentils through a colander, set aside to cool. Then into a container with a tight-fitting lid, place the vinegar, oil, curry powder, brown sugar, turmeric, soy sauce, and salt. Pour over the rice and lentils and add the red peppers, green peppers, and onions. Toss well and serve at room temperature. turn out? Well, first off, since it was the last of perhaps all the dishes that I will be doing, I wanted to have a special event, and since we've been in lockdown of some sort for two plus years now, I decided for the first time actually having company over and making a meal, so that's what I did. And let me tell you, it was spectacular on all counts. And the people that I had dinner with are not into, you know, foods that they're not familiar with, shall we say. Or flavors are not familiar with, shall we say. So I was really worried that they might not want to eat some of the dishes, but they wiped their plates clean and came back for seconds. It was that good. The sosotis, the grilled meat, was absolutely out of this world phenomenal. Now I didn't have a grill, I had the grill pan that I used on the electric stove behind me, so we had to make sure that all the windows were wide open and we're fanning all the smoke out to keep the smoke alarm from going off, but oh boy, that was really worth it. The marinating of the meat for three days gave it that incredible flavor, the tamarind, which is key, the tamarind paste, is an ingredient in it. Last time I didn't have the paste, but it was so great. And with the combination of the sweetness of the apricots and the sourness from the tamarind and the saltiness and everything just made it out of this world. Now the rice salad was also surprisingly good and it was so good and so delicious. Everyone came back for more. I had leftovers amazingly, but even those were phenomenal and no one could tell that it was brown rice. Their jaws were on the ground when I told them it was brown rice. They couldn't believe it. Or that there were even lentils in it. But it was so delicious, so flavorful. Five globes on the sosoti. Five globes on the rice salad. Five globes for Zimbabwe. Everyone, happy times. This is the end, or is it? Because now that we've cooked the food of every United Nations member state, last time around I did an additional four extra countries that are not UN member states they would be territories or something else. So I may or may not continue with that. I may or may not go back to doing my states. A lot has been going on. I've been doing this whole thing for going on 10 solid years now. So check out the blog at Cliffy Land. Like and subscribe, all the good stuff. If you're one of the people who've been watching since the very beginning, thank you so much for sticking with me. If you're new to all this, go back, check out all the old ones. And thank you so much for watching. It has been a pleasure. And now now I know how to cook, so thanks for watching and happy eating! These are not my original recipes, links to 
the original recipes and their authors can be found in the about section. If you have any thoughtful feelings or helpful suggestions about what I'm doing, feel free to sound off in the comments here. If you like what you see, like, subscribe, hit that bell to be notified when these videos are posted. And of course, you can always follow us on social media, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and Pinterest. Thanks for coming by. See you next time. Happy eating.